Good morning, everyone. I um, hope everyone is is having a good start to their day, and thank you so much for joining. Um, we may have a few more people join on in the next couple of minutes, but just to be cognizant of everybody's time, I'm gonna kind of get started. Um, like I said, thank you so much for joining today. Today's a little bit different um, from the webinars that we usually do, which are more product training. Today, I wanna go over how you can put your data to use. So inside of InspectPoint, there's a lot of things being recorded, right? So not only are you generating inspection reports, creating out your buildings, dispatching that out, but you're collecting a lot of information and you're able to set up a lot of information. I wanna go over with you today, sort of how you can not only set things up for success so you can start to see these sort of reports and data, um, but show you where you can find them. Um, so before we sort of jump into it, if I have not spoken with you before, welcome. My name is Jennifer Doyle. I am a co-founder and the Vice President of Customer Success and Support here at InspectPoint. And just another thing, just a housekeeping tip, I always like to put this in the beginning of every webinar that I do, but everyone is currently muted. It's nothing personal. It's just to keep background noise to a minimum. Um, so with that said though, I love questions. Um, I live for the questions. So if anything pops up in your mind while we're going through this, if you have any questions about reporting, you want me to focus on something that I went over quickly, drop that into the question box in the go to webinar control panel pop up and I will address any and all questions that I can get through during our time today. Um, I do just want to make a little note. I kind of have it highlighted, but there's a little hand button that's you're going to raise your hand. If you see a hand next to your um, name, that means you've raised your hand. That will not pop up the question box. So you'll see a question area. Just drop your question there and we will get to it. So what are we going to cover today? Right. It, like I mentioned, it's a little different. I'm not going to show you sort of how you would use a specific feature or anything like that. I want to talk data. And I can tell you, everybody in the office has heard me talking about this data. I love data. I love spreadsheets. I love a good pie, a pie chart. I love this stuff. So I live for this and I'm very excited to share it with you. But what I want to go over with today is where does your data live? Where can you access your data? And then what is needed setup wise to be able to see your data? So there are a couple of setup features that I'll jump into once we jump into the product very quickly to show you where if you set that up inside your settings area, how you can take your data and make it a little bit more specific. Along those same lines though, why should we care about data? What's the importance of data? But data helps drive decision-making and purchases. Right, so if you're on the fence on whether or not you should, you know, hire another uh, another sales rep, um, do you need to make the purchase of all of those fire extinguishers? Whatever it might need, whether it's hiring, purchasing, whatever it might be, data helps drive those decisions. It also can highlight productivity and also highlight inefficiencies in whatever process there might be. Um, you may think things, the sky is falling, and you look inside your instance and you're like, well, it's actually not that bad. We've got a couple inefficiencies, but if we make a couple of adjustments, we might be good. The other thing too is, is it helps improve processes and build workflows. So once again, you might be noticing, and I can, I'm gonna show you a little bit of this when we jump into the product, you might see that you have you know, X percentage of deficiencies are unresolved. Seeing that as data allows you to then dive into the product to see where am I missing things? Do I need to update my SOP or my standard operating procedure? Once again, if everybody in this office can attest to one thing, not only do I love data, but I love a good SOP. So, you know, identifying and improving those processes and building out those workflows 
to help create a, an SOP that can help your organization streamline processes, you can find that information inside of InspectPoint, and that's what we're gonna go over. So inside of InspectPoint, where does your data live? Well, there's this whole area inside of InspectPoint, and I don't know if you've ever had a chance to take a look at it, but it's called the analytic reports. That's where we're gonna spend majority of our time today, going through the reports, and I'm gonna show you what they do, how you can adjust them, et cetera. For more specific information, so from the analytic report, you can dive into the various areas. So you can look in your deficiencies and see the specific deficiencies from a high level that you're seeing in the analytic report, you can see very much more granular, much more specific inside that deficiencies area. Same thing goes for your inspections. So your inspections area, by filtering and using the different filters and the date ranges, you can get very specific and see maybe where some of those inefficiencies are, are living if you're noticing that in your reports. Now, one thing that I don't have on here, but where the also will live are proposals, if, if you have that enabled, as well as work orders as well. Um, so all of your analytic report gives you high level, and then you can dive into the various areas via those various tabs on the left sidebar as well. So I do wanna jump into the product. So give me just one sec while I switch screens here. And I'm gonna jump inside the product for a little bit of the remaining time that we have together. So I wanna start first with your settings area. Now your settings area in this upper right hand corner, this will vary based on whatever you have enabled inside of your instance. But as I mentioned in the beginning, there's a couple of things that you may wanna set up just so you can start getting your reporting a little bit more specific if you wanted to see various types of proposals, inspections, et cetera. So I am gonna start with inspections first. So I'll go to the inspection settings in that dropdown. And one thing you're gonna notice are your inspection types. So you may know this exists inside the inspection settings. This may be the very first time you've ever seen inspection types. This right here is where you can set the various types of inspections that you perform. So you have the ability inside inspect point, whatever you have enabled, right? Maybe you just have NFPA 25. Maybe you have 25, you have 72, you have 10. Maybe you have ULC, whatever it might be. There's no way for you to sort of group those together from a reporting perspective if you would like to see how efficient your sprinkler inspections are versus your fire alarm inspections. So one way that you can start to do that in the analytic reports is by grouping your inspections together by types. We have this set up so that you're looking at a sprinklers, alarms, a suppression, backflows, and fire extinguishers. Some people might look at inspection types by various instances, right? Because they might have multiple branches and they wanna say, you know, branch A, branch B, branch C. Majority of the users though are using it to evaluate the different types of inspections. Now, even if you just do sprinkler inspections, you could get even more specific in that. And when we get to the analytic report on the inspections, you're gonna see how by adding the inspection types in there, like I've said a couple of times now, you can get specific and then you can start comparing one to the other if you'd like to. Now, if you have the proposal module enabled, you also have the same ability with proposals. I like to and try to push people to use the proposal types when we're doing any sort of consultations or setups. And I like that because with proposals, it all comes down to money, right? Same thing with inspections. You wanna know money on the table, but with proposals, it's really about money on the table at that point, right? You're proposing work and you wanna make sure that the work you're proposing is being accepted. And then that's continuing into your workflow for your work orders. You might wanna know, am I spending my efforts on a proposal type or a type of service that is not giving me the ROI that I am expecting from it? 
So inside here, I have set up the following proposal types. I want to know any of my proposals that are contract or new bids. I want to look at my in-service work. I'd like to work at, look at my inspections, that my deficiencies that have come from inspections, and I would like to do installations. So this is the way I would like to break down inside our instance here, the different types of work that I'm proposing to see if I am missing something or spinning my wheels for just, you know, not the ROI that I'm expecting. Lastly, you also have the ability to do this inside service as well. So you have your different um, work order types here. These can and are set by you. You create the type of work order that it is. Now with work orders being newer, we do not yet have that analytic report inside of InspectPoint. But while you're setting this stuff up, once that report becomes available, it's all about your data is there, it's gonna generate. That's why I really like all of our analytic and our reporting because you have the ability to set it up and then the more you use the product, the more that you're gonna be able to see out of it, right? And it's always that age old tale, right? Garbage in, garbage out. If you have a lot of garbage data inside your instance, you may not have the best reporting. But if you can set up your instance from the very beginning or even make some simple adjustments now that'll allow you to start seeing your data the way you need it, types is a great way to do that. It just allows you to filter and sort and get more granular on it. Now, before I dive into the analytic report, I do just wanna go over to the left sidebar here. I mentioned to the fact that you have the ability to see specifics. So I'll start here on the specifics level and then show you the high level of what it looks like. But even when you're, you know, you're scheduling out your inspections or you're looking for anything specific, you can really get very specific in these screens. So when you set up inspection types, you can start to see your specific inspections per type. You could say, show me all of my complete inspections in a very specific type within a very specific time frame, because that's the report that you're looking at. You want to see, are there gaps in what's happening, right? And you might have noticed that at the high level analytic report. And now you want to get very specific and say, where, where did it go wrong? What inspection or inspections do I need to adjust? Is it a process breakdown? Is it a training issue? Is it something that was completely unavoidable and this one quarter we just got thrown for a doozy and we'll just make sure that doesn't happen again type thing. So you can get very, very specific and you can export this out into a CSV. So if you wanted to sort of manipulate it and play around with it, you can. Same thing goes for your deficiencies. So one of the analytic reports that we're gonna look at is a deficiency analytic report. Now you can get, once again, super specific on this. You can look at your deficiency type. Is it whatever, you know, uh, is it a fire alarm, is it a sprinkler? You're setting those equipment types. You can come in and look at a very specific status. So one of the analytic reports you might be looking at is quoted, um, accepted versus draft. And you are like, why do I have $50,000 sitting in draft? What are those deficiencies? Where has the customer been notified? Where is the, are we waiting on a delay from whatever it might be? And you can pop in here, filter on that very particular status and see exactly where those deficiencies are. So like I said, the analytic report's giving you that high level, and then you're diving into this area to see the specifics of it. Once again, you can export this out into a CSV. You'd be able to see your notes, the resolution notes, the status of it. And if you wanted to manipulate it outside of InspectPoint via Excel, you could do that as well. Same thing goes for your proposals. So once again, like I said, I think proposals is always the one that people are the most interested in because it's the dollars amounts on there. <laughs> but 
you can get super specific on this. So once again, you're looking at that analytic report from a bird's eye view, seeing where things are happening, are, are not happening in some cases, and then you're gonna come in and dive in and see, okay, show me everything that is service work that's in a draft. Why hasn't this been sent out? And once again, you can export this out as a CSV. So if you do need to have a conversation with that salesperson or the back office, or even if your technicians are in the field quoting, where is there a breakdown? Why is there a proposal created? And why hasn't this been set out? And you can specifically look at different proposals. And then same thing will go for your work orders um, as well. You can filter in here to see various um, where there may or may not be breakdowns. Once again, though, like I mentioned, the analytic report on this one is not yet ready, but when it is, it will once again give you that bird's eye view of here's how many are complete, here's how many are in progress, and then of course, once again, money associated with it, right? So how much is completed versus not completed? How much, um, you know, are you going back out to do these, et cetera? So I like to point this out because, like I said, I'm gonna get into the analytic report. You're gonna see it, it's a bird's eye view. This allows you to dive in deep. And all of this, you're not doing anything crazy to do this. You're just simply doing your workflow. Everything I'm about to show you as far as analytics go, with the exception of just the settings up in the upper right hand corner and setting types, all of these reports, all of this information I'm showing you is just being generated by you simply working inside InspectPoint. <laughs> so your inspections, your deficiencies, your work orders, your proposals, any of those invoices that are going out, it's all just usage. Um, so no additional work really needed to, to, to create these analytic reports. Um, I guess just time invested in, in usage. So this analytic report over here on this left sidebar, it may vary, once again, based on whatever your instance is set up as. I'm gonna work through each one of these um, and just sort of show you how it's pulling data and how you can manipulate it. Once again, though, it's pulling from what I just showed you. So like I said, no crazy setup. These come out of the box and are available to all InspectPoint users. So you've got your technician inspection report. Here, it is just showing you at a very simple level, all of your technicians, anybody you have set up as a user, and where the inspections are in the various statuses. So if you're at any time thinking, hmm, how is Patrick doing? I haven't seen a lot of inspection reports come from him and I'm wondering how he's going. Oh, well, he doesn't have any, that's why. <laughs> and I can see that he doesn't have any schedule. But I can see that I'm getting very close to the end of the month and I have a holiday coming up in the, in the States. And I see that I have a couple of people that have a lot of in progress inspections. So I may just want to reach out to that technician and say, hey, you know, for example, Brittany, I see you have, you know, eight inspections in progress. Do you need assistance with those? Do you need me to, to assign additional technicians to you? Um, you know, have you actually started them? You can have a conversation and you might be able to shift some work around. But you're seeing this across the board at all of your technicians. By default, it's going to show you the month that you're currently in. I might want to say, hey, listen, how are my techs doing for this quarter so far? And I can come in and I can adjust it. I might say, how are all my technicians doing for this particular year? I just want to see overall, like, who's, who's got the most? Who's doing the most right now? And I might notice by adjusting, I'm seeing inspections still in the scheduled status that I wasn't seeing when I just looked at the month. So right there, to me, that indicates to me that I have inspections that have, that have been scheduled, that that's money on the table, right? Why, hasn't, why have four inspections not been done yet? Those four inspections are sitting on an iPad. So now, this report right now makes me know I have to go to the inspections tab, filter on, on Patrick, look at his scheduled inspections, and then figure out, is there a breakdown? 
right? Were they not, was he not able to get into the, to that building for COVID restrictions or, um, you know, was something rescheduled? Um, were they not able to access? So maybe it's a training issue. Maybe Patrick didn't know that he could do a no access, send the inspection back, and he's just waiting to be able to access the building. Maybe it's just that training issue. They just don't know about that no access feature. Maybe there was a breakdown and it was rescheduled, and maybe it's on the office end. The office just didn't move it to canceled or whatever it might be. So it's just a way for you to see if there's a process breakdown in that report. I'm going to dive down in now into the technician completed versus scheduled report. This one's just a little bit prettier, right? At the end of the day, you might not need to know where the status of the started inspections are. You might not need to know how many have been invoiced. You just want to know how many are out of the iPads and how many are back. That's what this report will show you. So you're only really going to see the key statuses, the um, schedule. So what's still out on the iPad that has not been started? What is waiting review? So what has come back and has or is needing the review of the office? And what has been completed, which in most process flows means that the inspection report has been sent to the customer. Ideally, right, by the time the end of the month comes around, you should be seeing a lot of green bars on this report. Very few reds or orange, whatever color that might be, looks like an orangey red to me, but um, you're not gonna see that color or you shouldn't see that color. Once again, it's a flag, it's an indicator. Why am I seeing those? Trying to identify that process. Is there a miscommunication? Do we need to evaluate what might be going on? Is it that we have too many inspections and too few inspectors to do the work? So raising those questions, looking at that purchasing, looking at the hiring and the decision-making, all from a very simple bar graph. Um, over here, also going down a little bit further, um, is your overdue fire extinguisher. So this is gonna be very specific to just our fire extinguisher customers, but this is very helpful for them. So inside InspectPoint, right, we ask you to um, set your types for your fire extinguishers and you're indicating when is it five, six or 12 year service due. And if you're newer to InspectPoint, you might be wondering, well, how am I gonna keep track of this? I might do thousands and thousands of extinguishers. How am I gonna know when something is overdue? It's a good question. Your technicians will be indicated or they will give, be given an indication on the iPad when a service is due for an extinguisher. But you may want to be proactive about that, right? You may not wanna send your tech out there for a hundred in you know fire extinguishers and realize they get out there and it's 75 of them are due for service and you just throw say surprise um they might need to bring work with them right they may need to bring certain materials they may need to do recharges and this report here will allow you to see if things need to be ordered if a technician needs to know about a certain part this can be exported out so at the same time you might be going to your service manager. You might be going to purchasing and saying, I know I need to do an inspection here at these beach bums in the next month or two. I know I'm gonna need the following types of fire extinguishers. Can, you know, can I, do I have them in stock? You can stock the truck properly. Just having the information so that when you're out in the field, especially for your fire extinguisher inspections, you have what you need when you need it. So your, your return on investment on that, vis, on that visit is spot on, right? You're not wasting time going back to the office to go back out for something that could, um, you spend more on gas getting back and forth at that point. So making sure everything is good this is a helpful report for the fire extinguisher people. You can filter by the building, filter by a specific date, and then export out that information. So if that person needing the information is not inside of InspectPoint, they can still have access to it and know what they need as far as make types and weights go. Um, 
Continuing down the line, our deficiency dashboard. So our deficiency dashboard has lots of charts. Um, so I love this one personally. I love all my all my dashboards, but I love anything with a like I said, I was joking around with everybody in the office. I love a good love a good uh, pie chart. So on here by default, it's going to show you the month that you're currently in. I may want to see at a higher level or a little bit further out, how am I doing for a very specific quarter? So I said, I wanna look at this quarter and it's automatically gonna adjust these dates for me and I'm gonna apply the filter. Now I'm seeing, okay, I have 14 open deficiencies. So not too bad, right? I mean, there's always gonna be deficiencies. It, these 14 deficiencies could have just come in the door um, you know, while I was refreshing. So the open deficiencies, meaning unresolved deficiencies inside my instance currently for this quarter are 14. I have in the next chart over, I'm able to see my resolved versus open, right? So I actually have a pretty good ratio of resolved to open. But if I go to my next chart, I might see that I have in those opens, I have 42% of those that are brand new. So like I said, looking at this chart, just at a very high level, I don't wanna jump to conclusions on this one, right? But 42% of those are brand new, meaning a customer may have only seen those on their inspection report. They have not received a quote on it. It has not been linked to a proposal, at least that I'm able to tell. If you're using a program outside of an inspect point, you know, someone would have to come in and indicate that it's been added to a proposal. but like I said, looking at it, I'm like, oh, not bad, not bad. 42% mm, aren't quoted. So once it, it's going to make me think to myself, okay, where is there a breakdown? Is there a breakdown? Or am I just really fast with my reporting looking and my team just has not had time in the last 20 minutes to get to 42% of the 14 open deficiencies? But like I said, looking at this though, you can start to think to yourself, do I need to adjust anything? Um, and you can look down here on your technicians. So you might be looking to say, how are my technicians reporting on these deficiencies? Do I have a technician that's reporting a lot of deficiencies? I don't know. So I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna look. Now, of my breakdown, it's actually a pretty consistent amongst my amongst my techs right here conveniently, but I'm looking at it and you might think to yourself, you know, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing that one of my techs is identifying more than the other? And then you might look to see, okay, well, Caitlin here identified five. I want to know, are all five from one building? Um, you know, are we leaving? Then you can, of course, look into that even further, right? Looking into the proposals. How is that all going? But identifying, okay, well, Caitlin has five, but what are those five? Are they from the same building? Are they from different inspections? Is this building that we're identifying all these defic deficiencies on, is it slowing down the inspection process? Am I losing money? Where, if I need to, can I make any improvement? There may be no need for improvement, right? Like I said, you might look at this, dive in deeper and be like, we're doing pretty good. And you can see that now because you have this data in front of you. You can also come down into your inspections as well. And this is where that, that type breakdown is really gonna help. So once again, defaulting to it. One thing that if you haven't been doing this and you do wanna use this analytic report area, in addition to setting up your types for your, for your inspections, adding your inspection price on here it will start to give you revenue generated from inspections. Um, and that's a good thing to know, right? Is your inspection side more profitable than the service just from time spent and, you know, person's salaries and all of that? You can start to look at it, but you're looking at revenue generated from those inspections. I am going to look at it from, once again, a quarter perspective here. So in this quarter, I have performed 41 inspections and generated 23, roughly $24,000 in revenue 
for those inspections. Now, I might look at that and say, that's, that's it? That ratio just seems off. Or I might be like, that's awesome. I did awesome. I'm crushing it. Um, and then I can go a little bit further and say, okay, well, of my 41 inspections, 93 are incomplete. That's also great. It's close to the end of the month. And in my process flow, complete means the report has been reviewed and it has been sent to the customer. So my customer knows about that report and I can send an issue an invoice. And so I should be paid on this revenue shortly after because I know that 93% of, of those inspections have received the report, have received their invoice. And like I said, I should be paid on this 24,000 very shortly within this quarter. At the same time, I can see a breakdown of my technicians and the inspections that they've been doing. So once again, I can see, okay, well, this is a busy month for, for Jennifer. Maybe I can swap some inspections next time for Caitlin, or maybe Caitlin was out on a vacation. So therefore we're, we're switching some things around on it. Um, but I can see just raw inspections completed. Then I can see my inspection revenue by technician. So if I'm thinking to myself, okay, maybe I have a more veteran, a more seasoned in inspector, right? I want them to be on those larger inspections. And I know that this month is heavy in those inspections. I wanna make sure that I have that seasoned, I have that veteran inspector, and I want them to be performing the most money. Um, I also might say, oh, okay, you know, if I've got a, um, a trainee coming in, right? Jennifer's, Jennifer's doing a good job with this. I want this trainee on here too, so they can see and pick up on, on what they're doing. So once again, I can see overall, I can see specifics by technician. I can see specifics money-wise by technician. And if I wanted to dive in to see any of those inspections that are in quoted or in invoiced, I can go to my inspections tab, filter on that time frame, and see the specifics of it. Export it out and discuss any discrepancies or inefficiencies that you think you're finding with your team. The same thing will go with your user proposal um, as well. Oh, actually going back up really quick, I forgot to show the type. One thing that I might want to know is for, or actually, no, that was my inspection, so I'm jumping around too much. It's going smoothly right into the proposal. So in my proposal area, right, going into, I just reviewed my deficiencies, I just reviewed my inspections, I am seeing now the money that has been quoted out for these various items. Once again, though, I'm thinking, I'm not going to do quarter, I want to look at year so far. So, so far this year, I have about $239,000, $238,000 in approved work that I've done, right? Deficiencies have come in, maybe it's a new installation, whatever it might be, I have $238,000 that's been approved work. The average time to accept it, now once again though, <laughs> this is a demo account as well, so hopefully this is not as high, but it's average time of acceptance. So by using our proposal module, you are able to create the proposal. And from the moment that you send the proposal out to the customer, we're able to track how long it takes them to view and accept that proposal. So on average, it's showing us and telling us that it takes about 331 hours for a proposal to be accepted. Not a good number, not something I would, brag about right there on my on my end. The faster I can get these out, the faster it's hopefully accepted, right? If you can get your proposal out the door within 72 hours, I mean that even faster, it's top of mind for your customers. So that would probably be significantly lower for you just by sending this out. But I'm able to see, I have a breakdown. I have a breakdown in process. Why is it taking so long? Is it on our end? Is it sitting in draft for too long? Am I not following up with my customers enough to try to get these accepted or decline some sort of an answer? At the same time, I'm also able to see my various proposals by status. I see that while I have 238,000 in accepted work, 
38% of my proposals right now are sitting in a draft status. That's going to make me think, why? What are we waiting on? Um, a quote from a price from a manufacturer? Um, does my team just simply not know when to do or quote on it? Um, when to send it out? Who to send it out to? I would want to know 35% is great. I've got it accepted. Everything else is either out the door, viewed, it's good, but why 38%? So that's going to make me and trigger me to go back to that proposals tab and filter on that draft status and see what is the holdup on those specific drafts. Um, also, just amount per status. So most of my money right now is in the accepted. So if I look down here, I'm like, not bad. But I can come up here and say, OK, 4,000 of that is in draft, but do I have a bunch that aren't done? You can just start comparing numbers and then get really, really specific. But trying to see this from looking at the proposal screen can be tough. So like I said, it's just opening up this conversation with some of your team members. What is happening in the draft status? What can we do to make sure that we get this number in the 330 down and down and down and down so that that way the accepted time goes down and a total approved goes up? Um, you can look at the amount per user. So sometimes you have your technicians quoting, so you will see some of the technicians with their usernames in there. Or you may only have back-end users that are salespeople in here, or just you know, non-sales designated salespeople in here doing that. You can see the breakdown per user in here, who's quoting the most and who's not quoting the most. And then once again, just a simpler view. This is going to show every status of the various proposals. So I might see, okay, well, you know. Why does, you know, why does Jennifer, and then that'll help me when I go to my proposal, say, okay, show me all my draft for Jennifer. And you can sort of dive in and see where are those, those drafts sitting. And then you just might want to know who's really crushing it on your approved um, totals as well. Um, you know, who's going to get that, that uh, Diamond Club uh, reward at the, the end of the year um, for, for, you know, most sales. Um, and you can see it here easily just um, in a nice little bar graph here. One thing, though, that I did want to point out is if you wanted to start looking at those types, right? So I kind of mentioned it, said, hey, let's look at types. Let's set those up. I'm doing proposal work. Where am I really making my money? Where do I potentially have areas of growth? So I might come in here and say, okay, show me everything within this very particular period that has to do with service. So I have of that 238,000, 25,000 of it is just service related work. I can come in here too and say, let me look at installation in this very specific time period and say, okay, I have installation work. So majority of my proposals are that could be just this one particular installation or multiple installations. One area that I'm like, mm, I wonder how I'm doing with new contracts, new buildings, new bids. Come in, select that, get here and say, hmm, I don't have any approved right now. Now I have a couple, one that's in draft and one that's declined. So no accepted. Is this an area that I could potentially, you know, grow into? Do I have an opportunity to get new bids, new buildings? Um, is this an area that I want to throw my efforts at? By looking at this report, as well as your inspection report, you may see that you have an opportunity just based on how well your technicians are doing, your inspectors are doing, that you might be able to sell a couple more contracts for a very specific time frame, And you might want to start putting some efforts towards new bids, new contracts, things like that. So types will allow you to filter out and sort of see where are, where is a lot of your money coming from um, on the proposal side. At the same time though, you may just want to see in a simple dashboard or in a simple report how everybody is doing 
against each other like this, right? So not pinning people against each other, but you just want to see money per salesperson or money per user. Um, the graphs are great, but sometimes you just want to see the dollar amount. And this will allow you to once again say, where is my money? Um, where where are my sh my strong users right now? Could I shift some things around? Can I look and see, do I have anybody doing contract work? Um, do I have anybody doing the installation? Like who did my installation quote? Um, and I can see, okay, well, no, that was only one proposal that was out. So we landed a really great deal, but do we want to continue to do that sort of and spend time on that effort? Um, so like I said, this is more of a overarching view versus the charts you can see money on the table. Lastly, we've got a backflow report. So once again, very specific to backflow users, but sometimes you just simply need to when was the last time that a backflow was tested. And for people using it, it's very difficult to go into every building and say, well, what building has a backflow? And then clicking into the inspections tab and filtering and seeing when was something done and when was something not done. Um, so this report here just simply shows you within any specific time frame what building that backflow was done on, what backflow was performed, and the last date that it was tested. Um, and then there's also an additional page too, just in this case, just for this time frame here. Um, you might be noticing too the analytic report, like I mentioned, for service for our service module is coming, so that would be. Um, will be added to here as well, um, and also one for invoices as well. So for you to be able to see unpaid versus paid um, and just sort of get a, a more high level, you know, bird's eye view of, of where you are in those processes um, and with those modules, just like you are with the proposals and the inspections and the deficiencies. So like I've mentioned a couple of times, you you really, you're not doing anything extra here, right? All of this information that I am showing you right now is coming from inside of your instance. One thing though is if you need more, there is an option for custom reporting, right? So all of these reports are out of the box available to inspect point users. If you need more though, we can deploy a custom reporting database for you. So if you are an organization that has a reporting tool, and I list a couple of them, like Microsoft Power BI, so their business intelligence platform, Crystal Reports or AWS QuickSight, we can spin up that database, have your information go to that database, and then you can connect your reporting tool to that database that we spin up for you. Now there is an additional charge for that. So if you are interested in that, just let us know and we can talk pricing and all of that with it. But if you want to get very, very specific with your data, your business needs something specific, you have an additional option outside of InspectPoint, but using InspectPoint's data. So once again, you're not building anything or you know not taking any crazy data and trying to build it. You're taking the data from your usage and just expanding on it and customizing it to your business. Um, it's really great for companies that have multiple instances. So if you are an organization that has, like I said, multiple instances, you wanna see instance versus instance, this is a great option for you, um, as well as getting just more detailed custom reports. Um, you might want to use it more for hiring, um, and, and right now you might feel like this isn't the strongest on that one point. So if you're interested in, in custom reporting that's just specific to your instance, let us know, but you do have to have your own reporting module um, to do that, um, and we will spin up that database for you. So with that said, I would like to thank you all for joining uh, me today. Um, I am gonna leave this up on the screen. So if you have any questions um, and you do have to jump off, feel free to email me any of those questions and I will um, you know, get back to you on those questions. But I do see that I have a question. 
Um, and so now's a good time. I'll read the question that I have sitting in here. If you have any questions that you want answered, make sure you just drop into that question box, any of them. And then, like I said, though, if you have to drop off or you think of a question after the fact, make sure to email me and I will answer those for you. But the question that I have here is in the inspection dashboard, where in the process does the price get added to the inspection revenue generated? That is a great, great question. So I'm gonna jump into the product and sort of show you that. So let me just switch screens for a moment. And let me just get my question box out of the way there. And so there's two areas. If you've already created your inspection series, you can find the building, go to the inspection, and let me just get go to webinar out of the way. I'm gonna to wanna to find an inspection that's in the, I mean, I guess if you wanted to back date the, or back add the pricing, you could, but you'd probably wanna find a pending inspection and you would just simply add the price to the inspection price field here. Now, I'm gonna add this price to all quarterly inspections. So when I click update, just like when I click update to schedule an inspection, I get asked, do I wanna send this to all my inspections just this one inspection, et cetera. Um, this one must not be part of a series, so that was a bad example. But usually um, it would, oh, because I picked one that's invoiced. Um, it would ask me if I wanted to update all or you know, just some of them. Um, here, we'll try this with this one. So I'll update. And in the pop-up box, do I just want to update this one inspection? Do I want to update all pending quarterlies or update the price for all pending inspections? I'm gonna update this for all pending quarterlies because this is what I would charge for all the quarterlies at this building. And it's gonna apply the price for you there. At the same time though, I can also, um, when I'm creating the inspection series, set the price. So when I come to inspections and I click new inspection and then I click repeat, on step two, when I'm selecting my frequencies, I can go ahead and um, set the price. One thing though, just while I am here, here's where you can also set your inspection type as well. So you would set your inspection type at that particular inspection. And so I'm going to call this my sprinkler, set what's on the inspection, go to next, and then set my frequencies. And when I'm at my frequencies, I can add my pricing here. And then what it's gonna do is for all my annuals, set that price and all my quarterlies, set that price right from the very beginning. So I don't have to go back and do that afterwards. And then this is the number that will count towards your um, inspection revenue generated for that time period. Any other questions that anyone can think of? I'll just switch it back over here. I'll keep it up for a couple more minutes, but um, like I said, if you do have to drop off for whatever reason, um, thank you so much for attending. Um, oh, and I got another question, but thank you though for the people that do have to drop off. Thank you so much for attending. Like I said, this was a little bit different of a webinar and um, I'm really glad that, that you guys joined to just learn a little bit more about um, all the stuff that you can see inside of InspectPoint. Um, Good question. So it's now it's just a d additional on to that last question that I just talked about, which is, does it add to inspection revenue after the inspection is marked complete or when? Um, I believe it is when the inspection is marked complete or it's in one of those final statuses. Um, it would show in, it will show in with I guess the completed total. It's gonna try to look at all of your pricing and then it's gonna show you the breakdown and it'll show you the price of your inspections in each one of those statuses. So I guess you can add the price to an inspection after it is completed, but from this reporting, from the analytics point, it's looking at all of your revenue within that time period and then, um, then it's breaking down to say, okay, inside this very particular status, 
this is how much money is in that status versus this status. Um, but overall, your inspection revenue generated is just any inspection in that time frame that has a price associated with it. Um, this one's a little bit different, a little bit um, outside the scope of just this one here, but it, there's a question about, is there a setting to have fonts and colors for denotes and deficiencies? Um, so, um, no, there is not, there is not a setting currently for you to be able to um, give different fonts to different items within the product um, and on the reports um, or designate any colors um, for any of that, um, especially also inside here. Um, so the colors um, inside of, of the dashboards are pretty hard coded. But once again, if you wanted to give that customization to your reports, um, we give you that option to be able to connect that, um, connect you know, to the database that we would spin up with your data um, so that you could get really, really custom if you wanted specific fonts and specific colors. Um, but no ability right now to change any of those colorings um, inside of InspectPoint. Any other questions that anybody can think of? These are good questions. All right, so I am gonna call it then. Um, like I said, any questions come up after the fact, because I know that's always how it is with me whenever I sit on a webinar. I might watch the recording afterwards and think to myself, oh, I forgot about this one, one part. Um, please email me. If you are interested in that custom reporting, right, connecting it with, um, you know, um, spinning up your own custom database and connecting it with your reporting tools, reach out to me. I can put you in touch with the sales team. Um, I might even be able to get you pricing on that as well, work with engineering to sort of see how how that would work. Um, and then, um, yeah, remember the biggest thing is this, all of this data that you're seeing, you're not putting anything additional into it. Once your system is set up with your buildings and you are really rocking and rolling in here, this data is just building upon itself. It's compounding and it's, it's giving you the information that you need to, to help run run your organization, find, you know, process processes that are working, identify things that need to be be fixed um, and, and help you drive, you know, with business decisions. Um, so once again, thank you so much for joining today. Um, any questions, feel free to reach out to me um, and you will get a copy of this as well. So if you did wanna share it with anybody in your organization who could not make it today, feel free to, to um, share this around and it will also be put up on, on YouTube as well. So thank you again so much and have a great day.